Hello and welcome to this Microsoft Excel video tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a single cell formula to create a classic calendar table in Excel. Now, in the Power BI desktop, we can create a dim calendar table which allows us to use the time intelligence functions in our reports. We want to create something similar in Excel using the amazing let function now based on our date value we've got date starting from the 4th of january 2010 to the 31st of december 2023 so we've got 13 years period now it is assumed that our fiscal year starts on the 1st of april of the current year and ends on the 31st of march the following year. Now, based on that assumption, we're going to create the amazing calendar table using a single cell formula in Excel. So, without much talking, let's dive in. So, I'm going to come to cell B2 and I'm going to type in the let function. Now, the first thing I want to do is to store all this date value into a name called dim date put in a comma so for the value i'm going to click on the fourth value control shift down arrow key control backspace put in a comma now for the name tool i'm going to type in year name comma so for the value that i want to assign i'm going to type in the year function and i want to access this dim date column now we want to evaluate as we go along put in a comma so let's just temporarily evaluate this year name so i'm going to call the year name Close the bracket, control enter, so we can see the year extracted. Amazing. F2 to open the formula. Let's delete the year and the backspace. Now, for the name tool, I'm going to call this one month underscore number. And I'm going to call the month function. And I want to access the dim date. Close the bracket, comma. Let's call the month name. Okay, let me just rename this month number. So this is going to be month number close the bracket to evaluate control enter so we can see we've been able to extract the month number using the month function double click the formula get rid of the month number delete the closing brackets now the next name that i want to provide the name for is going to be the month name itself so for the value i'm going to use the text function now the text function requires the value so that's going to be the dim date put in a comma now for the format we want to actually extract the month number in an abbreviated format so inside double quotes mmm post double quotes close the text comma let's evaluate the month close the bracket control enter so we can see the month name fully ex extracted in an abbreviated format f2 to open the formula get rid of this delete now for the name five you want to calculate the standard quarter now in the power bi desktop we've got a function called the quarter function dax function but in excel we do not have anything like that but before the quarter function came on board we can use this amazing round up function now the round up function is going to take two arguments number and num digits so for the number i'm going to call the month number divide by three and then I want to round to zero digits, close the bracket, comma. Oh, oops, I forgot to specify the name for the quarter here. So comma, so I'm going to call the quarter, close the bracket, comma. So this is going to give us the standard quarter, okay? Month of January to March, it's going to be quarter one. So from April to June, you can see. Let's scroll down. From the month of April to June, that's going to be the standard quarter two. Cool. Now, let's go back to the formula. F2 to open the formula. Get rid of this. Delete. Now, for the name number six, we want to deal with the fiscal quarter. Now, for this, I'm going to call this the name fiscal quarter. Put in a comment. So, I'm going to use the if function. So, I'm going to say if the standard quarter is equal to one then i want to start from 
four. Otherwise, then give me the standard quarter minus one. Close the bracket. Then I can call the fiscal quarter name. Close the bracket again. Control enter. I can see this is going to give us four because our fiscal year or fiscal period is going to start from the month of April. Okay. F2 to open the formula. Get rid of this. Delete. Now let's calculate the fiscal year comma so I'm, again i'm going to use the if function now i want to check if the standard quarter is equal to one again then i want to take the fiscal the year calculated column minus one otherwise give me the current year close the bracket for the if put in a comma now let's just indent the formula in order to make it more readable i'm going to come here i'm going to press alt enter let's just you know indent and see the next line now i'm going to call this fiscal year oh, excuse me fiscal year close the bracket for the light control enter so we can see this is going to give us 2009 because we have 2010 year cool now let's calculate the fiscal period now i'm going to call this one fiscal period Period. So for the fiscal period, I'm going to put inside double quote Q, close the double quote. I'm going to use the ampersand and I want to concatenate that with the fiscal quarter. Another ampersand, there's an ampersand, okay. And let's just factor in a separator inside double quote. I'm going to use the iPhone, close the double quote. Again, I'm going to use the ampersand and then the fiscal year. We can combine that, okay. Now, put in a comma. So let's evaluate this fiscal period. Control V, close the bracket, control enter. So we can see we have the Q4, iPhone 2019, 2009, Q4, and so on and so forth. Okay. Double click. Okay. So let's get rid of this. Delete, delete. Now we need to now begin to stack them horizontally. Okay. So I'm going to call this on calculation. That's going to be the final calculation. So I'm going to use the H stack function, the amazing new function Excel. Now the first thing I want to start is the year name. Now let's evaluate as we go along. So I'm going to call this calculation. Close the bracket, control enter. You can see we have the year. Cool. Double click the formula. I'm going to come right after the year. I'm going to put in a comma to activate the array tool. And I'm going to type in the month number there. Control enter. You can see that in column C. Cool. Double click in cell B2 again. After the month number, put in a comma. And that's going to activate the array 3. So I want to call the original month name. Control enter. You can see we have the month of January. When you scroll down, we'll be able to see February, March, till December. Let's go up. Now let's go back to the top cell in cell B2, F2 to open the formula. Now, after the month, put in a comma carefully and that activates the array number four. So for the array number four, we want to call the standard quarter, control enter. Okay, you can see we have the standard quarter, double click on the formula. I'm going to come after the standard quarter, put in a comma and that's going to activate the array five. So we want to start the fiscal quarter control enter so we can see the fiscal quarter starting from the quarter four okay now come to the top cell again we want to start the fiscal year put in a comma so call the fiscal year control enter so we can see the fiscal year that's cool so the final one is the fiscal period double click the cell b2 again the top cell come after the fiscal year Carefully put in a comma, so we're going to call the fiscal period, control enter, and that's amazing. So we can see from the date value in column A, we've been able to extract the year, the month number, the actual month name, the standard quarter, the fiscal quarter, fiscal year, and the fiscal period. Now, this is exactly what we can create in the Power BI desktop using the calendar DAX function. And then we can use the year function, the month. Now, in this case, we're going to use the 
format function in the Power BI desktop. We can use the quarter function here. And then for the fiscal quarter and the fiscal year, we're going to use the same if logical function. And of course, for the fiscal period, we have to use the same ampersand. So this is basically how we can use a single cell in cell B2 to create the classic calendar table in Excel worksheet. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel because there is a lot to come. Thank you and bye for now. Cheers.